Travis Wayne Goodsell. <clears throat> Third video on Revelator. Section 107, verse 91 and 92. And again, the duty of the president of the office of the high priesthood is to preside over the whole church and to be like unto Moses. Now Peter, James, and John. Behold, here is wisdom, yea, to be a seer, revelator, translator, prophet, having all the gifts of God which he bestows upon the head of the church. And so if you think that Nelson's supposed to have it, not me, which keys does Nelson claim as president? The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have come out with an official statement that they are not prophets and revelators because they refuse to prophesy and reveal. Prophecy is to predict the future, reveal is given in the Book of Mormon. The keystone. <clears throat> the footnotes are on seer, revelator, prophet, and gifts. Not translator. So when you go down to 92b, you only see TG Revelation. So you click on it, or flip to it, and let's see if we can find that one particular passage in the Book of Mormon. And it would be Mormon eight they put 34. So close. So close. But they purposely skipped it. So if you go to 834, it says, Behold, the Lord God hath shown unto me great marvelous things concerning that which must shortly come. <clears throat> At that day when these things shall come forth among you. However, they focused on shown as revelation, definition, inspiration. Yet, if you were to put it in its context with verse 33, which they neglected, there's the word. Behold, look ye unto the revelations of God. This is the end of the Book of Mormon. He's talking about the abridgment book that he just wrote. And he's saying they are revelations. And so if he's saying that it's inspiration revelation, as this church claims it is, it means the Book of Mormon is not literal history. It's just all made up in Mormon's mind. He's abridging a book of made up stuff. It's just revelation. However, it's still not literal history because it defines what revelation is. Revelations of God, for behold, the time cometh at that day when all these things must be fulfilled. Predictions of the future fulfilled. Revelations, time, day. 
So now, verse 34, Behold, the Lord hath shown unto me prophecies, not revelations. And in fact, we can even say visions, visions and dreams, shown. Great and marvelous things, prophecies, predictions of the future, concerning that which must shortly come, fulfilled. And it came to pass, that means prophecy. Everybody misses that. Everybody mocks it as a linguistic error. And then at that day, when these things shall come forth among you. Visions, prophecies, revelations. Right there in the Book of Mormon, the keystone of Mormonism, and it's not correctly footnoted for you, so that you don't get taught properly. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. You need to know the ancient cultural practice behind what this means. One. He sees something. He sees a vision. Lord sitting upon his throne. This is Isaiah chapter 6. When a king dies, the birthright blessing son is intended to take over the throne. <coughs> And so the Lord sitting upon his throne is technically the successor to King Uzziah. And they don't have that reference to the Bible dictionary. <laughs> we could look it up take more time, I guess. We're only at eight minutes. <laughs> and it takes me right back to <clears throat> uh, Bible Dictionary. <sighs> and so I Israel Kingdom of No. So let's go to Kings. No. Hmm. Weird. I have my paperback so I can flip to this easier rather than trying this for the first time here. <coughs> anyway. See if we'll freeze the camera here by Google searching it. Ah. <clears throat> Kings of Israel and Judah. Oh, here's a pretty picture. Isn't that special? 
There's Uzziah. Jotham is the one who replaces him. And so technically it would be Jotham. Let me save this. I don't like that file size. Is there a better file size for that? people make pictures so small it just it doesn't make any sense you're putting them online make them big <laughs> anyway okay and so Jotham is the Lord taking the throne filling the train with the, or filling the temple with his train as he sees in vision. <clears throat> See, what he's doing here is giving you a prophecy. This is Isaiah, the prophet, prophesying, using the historical event of Uzziah dying and Jotham taking over the throne as the new Lord, King, Christ. Do you understand this? Jotham is anointed, christened, as Christ, King, anointed. Thus, the Messiah the ancient kings were a theocracy. They were kings and the high priests. Theocracy. Government and religion combined together as one. <clears throat> and in order to take the throne, he also has to have a wedding supper feast at the temple in order to take the throne because he now has to have a birthright blessing son in order to succeed him when his time is up and he dies like Uzziah this is ancient cultures 101 Okay, so not only is he taking the throne, he's getting married. Jotham is getting married so that he would then have a, a wife who would be beginning to be barefoot pregnant and in the kitchen for him. <laughs> and so the rest of chapter 6 carries on. And then we get to Isaiah chapter 7. And in verse 13, <clears throat> he's now saying, he's talking to Ahaz. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz. may not be able to see this because this is a PNG. Nah. But sure enough, Ahaz is the son of Jotham. Jotham gets married in chapter 6 with the death of Uzziah. And Jotham now takes over as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Great High Priest. And he has a son named Ahaz. So this is where we're getting to chapter 7. 
the baby who is born to Jotham, who is now the king in chapter 6, with the death of Uzziah. <clears throat> and so, in this context, he continues, and he said, Hear ye now, O house of David. Messiah ben David. We should have left that up on the screen. Because he's specifically referring to the tribes of Israel. But this is an interesting twist because when according to the genealogy after Solomon there was a split of the kingdom according to the Bible part this never happened this is all prophecy and revelation when you go back to David and Solomon and Rehoboam and Jeroboam the first when the kingdom is split <clears throat> and so you have the descent of the kings of Judah and the descent of the kings of Jeroboam the first and when you get to Ahab whose wife is Jezebel for the northern tribes kingdom you get the three sons Ahaziah Jeroram and Athaliah. Athaliah marries into, uh, and she would be the female, I'm guessing, because you can't have two males have babies. <laughs> I'd have to check the Bible for who this Athaliah is who bred with Jeroram of the kings of, of Rehoboam in Judah, which is kind of interesting because the brother is Jeror, Jehoram and Athaliah breeds with Jehoram of the Judean kings rather than the Israel kings <laughs> to give birth to Ahaziah and so here is where you see that the northern tribes with the southern tribe are merging the families together <coughs> even though they, uh, the southern tribe did not take over the northern tribe, but they could now. They have restored the families back to when it was under King David Moses the third, who ruled over the whole land, including Egypt, which is what he actually was. He was a pharaoh of Egypt. <clears throat> but nonetheless and so then you have Ahaziah Jehoash Amaziah Uzziah Jotham Ahaz Hezekiah Manasseh Ammon Josiah Jehoahaz and then Zedekiah Jehoiakim Jehoiachin, there's Zedekiah. That would be the Babylonian takeover. Zedekiah technically does not belong on this king's list. Whoever did this did a boo boo and put it in Wikipedia. But these are just the king's lists. But it does say the genealogy of the kings of ancient Israel and Judah. 
And so, yeah, if Athaliah is male, that, there's some major problems here. <laughs> okay. And so, uh, these are the kings of Judah that Isaiah is talking about, but of the kings of Israel as well that have merged in. So it, both lines go back to David through Solomon and his two sons, which they didn't even put Jer Jeroboam as coming from Solomon either. Because that follows the pattern that the Genesis author had of the birthright blessing son getting usurped by the younger son to have the birthright blessing line. <clears throat> and so it was following that pattern to tell its particular story. So yes, there are some errors here. And the only way to know about it is to know the ancient cultural practice. So anyway. <clears throat> Hear ye now, O house of David, for the family line for both kingdoms of Israel and Judah, still tributary to Egypt at this time. They are not independent kingdoms. They are tributary, meaning they give tribute to Pharaoh. <clears throat> Is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will ye weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. The word for sign from Paleo-Hebrew is the letter A and the letter X, the first and the last letters of the Paleo-Hebrew script alphabet. <coughs> and it just so happens that as a sign, the first and last letters of the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet form the shadow of the sun god at noonday upon the earth for the three days and hours of darkness over the United States of America from 2017 to 2024. Prophecy and revelation, the time, day, hour. And so he continues, Behold, a virgin, Virgo, shall conceive, bear a son, and shall call his name Sun God at Noonday, from the Egyptians. They are tributary to Egypt. Emmanuel is the Sun God of Egypt at Noonday, distinguished from Ra, who's the Sun. <clears throat> which in Hebrew is Shemesh, found in the name Samson, Sun King, not Sun Child, Sun King, Google search. <clears throat> okay. This is the Christ of the latter days for the Jews. See how this was done? Uzziah, from both houses, both kingdoms, dies. Jotham takes over. He gets married to be king. He has the son Ahaz. Ahaz is born. 
And here Isaiah is saying, Hear, O house of David, the original one of the united kingdom of Israel and Judah. That it split off until the two men having sex. <laughs> Joining the kingdoms back. But not literally. They still were separate kingdoms because the kingdoms of northern Israel continued to split until Assyria came in and conquered the northern kingdom and deported them back into Assyria and Assyrians were deported into the land of Israel for which those who remained behind intermingled produced the Samaritans that the Jews of Judah would come to hate as enemy betrayers, half-breeds, whatever bullying, abusive name they would claim to justify being abusive to, and back and forth. <clears throat> because it wouldn't be until Judah comes back after being held captive from Babylonian capture. Okay, this is how Revelation is working here. He gives you the date of the three days of darkness over the United States of America for the latter day time period and says that there's another one of the coming of the Christ who is to be the rightful king who will restore the kingdom of David. Remember, they're tributaries to Egypt. They are not independent kingdoms. <clears throat> so thus, Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19, a man like David Moses the third. That's the Christ that he's referring to here. And so taking Isaiah 6 and 7 in context that I just gave you, we go to Revelation chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. And there appeared a great sign in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered that's isaiah chapter seven virgin shall conceive and bear a son we don't see bearing the son in verses one and two we do see the sign that it's a sign in the heavens but it's not the three days of darkness. And so, in the Greek text of Revelation, it goes missing. <clears throat> and it's, I, well, let, we can check. MGNT. Yep. Semion? That's interesting. Semion is sign in Greek. Interesting. Interesting. We gotta do a little side trip for my personal interest, curiosity.
Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. Okay. Different S. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Do I need to go back to the other one or can we continue on here? <clears throat> yeah, I think we're done. Yeah, very, very curious. Actually, is it? I don't memorize. And so... It is the same as God Sigma. Oh my hell, yeah. Sign is Simeon. Interesting. For Simon Peter. Simeon. Fascinating. That's the wonder. Simeon. Interesting. <coughs> Fascinating. Huh. So there's more into this with the original languages. But that's the translator one that we're going to get to next after this one. Woman clothed with the sun. I hope all of you understand that the sun is not up right now, even though it's 6.12 in the morning here in Utah, Salt Lake Valley. <coughs> Because at 7.08, we have sunrise here in Salt Lake City, Utah, Mountain Daylight Time, Saturday, September 14th, 2024. This is a prediction of the future with a revelation of the time. And it's science, not cuckoo psychology psycho psychology making things up for stuff science that's what's being used is the stars and the constellations and the, the moving planets and the sun and the moon to designate time thus the Prophecies are combined with revelations of the celestial bodies to designate the future time for the future prediction. All right here in scriptures. Gave it to you from Isaiah. Here it is in Revelation. It's the same. Isaiah's and John's revelation the same virgin gives birth but where's the birth there it is verse 5 and she brought forth a man child <coughs> who was to rule all nations the king Ahaz son of Jotham he is born to be the birthright blessing son to succeed his father, Jotham, who succeeded his father, Uzziah, upon his death. And Isaiah is using that for the latter days. That begins in 2017. <clears throat> With the Book of Mormon, the Iron Rod, and her child was caught up unto 
God and to his throne. The heir to the throne. Chapter 6. Uzziah dies. Jotham becomes the king of kings, lord of lords. Son is born to become the ruler of all nations. To sit on the throne. A son of David. A Christ of David. A Messiah Ben, son of David, Moses the third. And so the sun will rise at 7.08 a.m. this morning. And then there will be a setting time. Because of the magic powers of inspiration and feeling. Mm -mm. Science. Try to prove it wrong. Everybody go outside right now. Even though this video won't even be up until after it already happened. Oh, you're tricking us, Travis. It's actually after 7.08 a.m. in the morning. You're trying to deceive us. <laughs> Bleep you. <laughs> you denial us. The sun is specifically in a specific constellation in the heavens right now. And, let's refer to it as I've already... Every morning I obtain the, the uh, snapshot of the heavens with my Urim and Thummim. And so for this morning, 9-14-2024, <clears throat> The sun is on the crown of Virgo. The sun is about to enter into the constellation of Virgo. Because the middle of September to the middle of October is when the sun is in Virgo. Year after year. Now when you go past a thousand years ago, The sun was in Virgo in the middle of August to the middle of September. So when you're going back to try to find this during Jesus' time to prove that it's for Jesus, yeah, you'll have to adjust your months with your Urim and Thummim. Because otherwise it will be in Leo. Or actually, it would be in uh, Libra, right? Because there's, yeah, it, oh my god. <laughs> drama, drama, drama. to know your astronomy. You need to know that the Earth revolves around an axis and it's tilted. Thus we have seasons. The seasons of the sun. We had joy, we had fun, we had seasons in the sun. <coughs> I'll follow the sun. And so, yeah, the sun, pretty stationary. It's the center of our galaxy, our uh, solar system. As there are suns at the center of our galaxy, following that same pattern. But <coughs> we from Earth see the sun differently every 365 days of the year minus some hours so that every four years we add a day in February for a leap year because of the earth and how it goes around the sun 
in order to keep up with the time. And so we now know that if it's going to be the Roman period time to prove that Jesus is true, this is in the month of August as we designate the calendar. You won't find it because he gets more specific. These signs in the heavens only happen once. They never happen again. When you include all five visible planets, the sun, the moon, and the constellations, which they go through. Once and once only, they never, ever repeat. Because it takes too long to do so, first and foremost, but because of the Earth tilted and the North Pole, therefore having a new uh, North Pole every so many thousand plus years, plus or minus years, I think it's plus years, because the North Pole is going to change uh, in a couple hundred years from now from what I understand. <clears throat> and so that resets the whole timing so that the previous North Pole timing will no longer happen again. So even though if we didn't have the tilting and the new North Pole to reset the clock, <clears throat> it would eventually all start where they all started at the same time. But it takes so many years because every single planet goes around our Earth as we see it from Earth at a certain rate. And so it takes enough time until they all reset and it will never happen because the earth is tilted and the north pole and so everything gets reset one and only one time ever <clears throat> and so you're looking for the middle of september the middle of october the moon under her feet 29.4 days to do a full lap through the zodiac. And so, 29.4 days, middle of September to middle of October. Only happens once, at the most twice, if it's at the beginning and the end of the month. So we're narrowing it down. This is without doing the calculus math for astronomy. Because these are math proofs because of this, because of the precise timing. You can use calculus physics for astronomy to figure all this out too. I kind of suck at that part. Even having a calculator, don't know how to use it for the calculus physics. <clears throat> but I understand how this works. So I'm able to explain it to you, which you should have already known back in grade school. You did have an astronomy class, right? Do they not teach that in Utah? They instead teach the Book of Abraham. And so Kolob is... We'll get to that. <laughs> and upon her head, what constellation is on her head? Leo, the lion. Leo, the lion, is designated with nine stars. 
even though there are billions the further back you go in space on earth mankind going all the way back to the babylonians if not the egyptians for this designate leo with nine stars because there are no lines there is no actual lion that you see in the sky you see stars no lines connecting them so those ancients said we are going to designate that location of those nine stars as a lion that's how they did it <clears throat> but there are 12 stars in Leo there are three stars that appear in Leo so is it the death of a star and thus a bursting of light no <laughs> there are five visible planets three will be added to Leo we don't know which one they are <clears throat> because there's Mercury Venus Mars Jupiter and Saturn those are the five visible planets and so three of those are in Leo and so she's pregnant Virgo is not pregnant there is no woman in outer space again they designate her with stars those particular stars no lines no actual woman out there they said those stars were gonna be a woman we're gonna call it Virgo <clears throat> okay and so it's another planet so there's four out of the five visible planets since it's just the one you need to know the rotations of the planets as seen from earth through the constellations a pregnancy is a period of nine months first one can go up as high as 10 11 12 three years eight hey, women <laughs> the eternal pregnancy now the first one can take longer because the woman's hip bones are being cracked open and spread apart to give her those curvy hips <clears throat> and the exit of the womb is going to be stretched wide open for the baby to come out and so thus it can take a little longer I was an extra 10 days in my mom's womb for example after the nine months <clears throat> And so you need to find a planet that as seen from earth retrogrades in a constellation for a pregnancy period Jupiter to cut it short Jupiter was designated as the planet that retrogrades for a pregnancy period and so thus the god Jupiter of Rome is the king of kings lord of lords the great high priest and his actual baby name meaning which apparently nobody else understands is Yah Peter, Jupiter, turning the, the Yah, Y into a J sound. 
So thus, Jesus is actually a Shua, Shua, Yahshua. Yah is the Greek Zeus, which is pictorially a match for Yah of the Hebrews. Yah, Za, Jew, all the same God. And then Peter. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> okay. And then Amen, the sun god at noonday. That's what all of them are. Because Ishmael is the name of Yah is the sun god. In translation. But that's the next video. Translation is next. So we've got one of the five visible planets identified as being in Virgo. And so she'll give birth. That's at the star of Bethlehem, the house of bread, which is Spica. There at her womb. And so the pictures show her holding some stalks of wheat for the house of bread. Bethlehem. <clears throat> but there we have God and his throne. There's the fifth visible planet. The father of Jupiter is Saturn. God. His throne is the constellation of Ophiuchus. There above Scorpio and uh, there by Libra as well. He's got serpents split in half, which is also there. It's the great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Serpents. That's also a date. <clears throat> and so by moving verse 5 to verse 3 as it should, for the 23rd of September 2017, following the 21st of August 2017, the first day of darkness, the death of the king, and the birth of the successor, all being portrayed in the heavens as a sign, but also the dates of when they would be occurring as prophecy. Prophecy revelation seen in dreams so this morning's dream yeah I'm waking up to this whole discussion that I just gave you <laughs> with the kings from chapter 6 etc It is weird to dream in Jewish Kabbalah. <laughs> now that I understand that that's what it's doing for my prophecy dreams. <laughs> and so, yes, the dream that I had on 9-11 at 3 in the morning was a Jewish Kabbalah dream. Irene. But he's not the president of the church. What is he doing wanting to lay his hands on my head with the number 15 doubled? <laughs> That's the final thing that we're leading up to with this series.
in the coming days, the Feast of Tabernacles of the Jews, 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 Jews. And so, when Babylon conquers Jerusalem on 9th Av, which we just had this year, 9th Av, the baptism of water from 1 Kings chapter 18, the god Yah versus the priests of Baal. They couldn't bring Jesus. And so then it was my turn. And I dumped the water all over the altar of Utah. And then 9-11 happened. And the stars fell from heaven. And a lightning strike, the symbol of Jupiter, go to Doctrine and Covenants section 85 verse 8, which comes from Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19 is verse 7, the one mighty and strong, verse 8 is verse 20, the false prophet. How does he die? Death, succession, but Nelson has no authority, because Brigham Young had no authority. He insurrected Joseph Smith's erected organization, and so it needs to be resurrected, a second direction, a restoration of Joseph Smith's religion. All the prophecies are about that. Second Nephi chapter 3 verse 5. Messiah ben Joseph. To set up the organization, set up the temple, and then be assassinated by the enemy. Who insurrects his order. And then it will be resurrected in the latter days. And this is the last year of the latter days. It's coming, Mormons. And you don't believe. And there are prophecies about utter destruction if you choose to continue to not believe. And all the prophecies have happened, all the revelations have happened, all of the visions have happened. And the one who has translation is here, and you don't believe, you're still going to vote for Trump. <laughs> you don't believe 3rd Nephi chapter 7. After they failed in 2020. So it's gonna be this year. Because you don't believe. Precisely as it stands in Acts. <clears throat> so yeah, it's coming. Whether you believe or not. Everything has happened. Even when you didn't believe it would happen, it happened nonetheless. Because very few of you are following and believing, like 12 apostles, pretty much. <laughs> Nobody else believes. They watch because oh look at that kooky guy oh he thinks he's the Jesus <laughs> dumbasses <clears throat> yeah it's all happening but because you think Jesus is real you're waiting for Jesus and no man knows the day or the hour of his coming thank God because he failed the show. <laughs> So you keep living on in your fantasy bubble of a future coming of Jesus. 
and you're helping him by murdering people and trying to coup the government to make him come. <laughs> we'll show you, Travis. <laughs> we'll be the wicked people to cause Jesus to come and destroy us to prove he's real. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. Dumbasses. Oh, dear God. It's just stupid. Alt-right evangelicals, Christian nationalists, believe they've got to be the wicked people to bring about Jesus to prove that their religion is true. And yet Jesus is not going to destroy them as the wicked people who brought about the misery and suffering to cause Jesus to come. Yet Jesus is going to come and instead murder the innocent people who were victims of the Christian nationalist religions. That is so screwed up. Right Mormons? You too. You believe Jesus is coming to murder everybody, but not you. And so the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, along with you, giving you orders to cause the crimes and violence and a coup, that Jesus is going to not punish you for your wickedness, but instead is going to punish the victims of your wickedness, because they're the heathens. That is so screwed up. God, you guys are evil. But yeah, all behind your back, because you don't want to see it. It's happened. Here I am, and you want to murder me to prove Jesus is true. God, just like you did to Joseph Smith. Okay, it's all the the dragon and serpents. That's the seventeenth of December, two thousand seventeen. The fifth dark day of Hanukkah. And on that day, the prophecy is that Nelson, not Monson, lowered the age of child bride virgins to 11. A great red dragon having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. That red dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And who is it? We know it's Nelson. Baby name meaning of Russell Marion is Mars. We now know the three others, by the way, that are in Leo. Mercury, Venus, Mars. <coughs> Nelson. And in the Book of Mormon, the names of the false prophet and the Christ of Mormons is given. Emmanuel, me, God's soul. Travis, he who is from the crossroads of the sun god, of the shadows cast on the earth. Cross, roads, sign. Actually, up because the sun comes from the. <clears throat> and then Lucifer. Mars is the husband of Venus. Venus is symbolized as the inverted pentagram, pointing down for a falling star. The symbol of Lucifer. Thus the Latin Vulgate put Lucifer in Isaiah. And it's there in the Book of Mormon.
the name of Russell Marion in the Book of Mormon. Me in the Book of Mormon by name. And you don't believe the Book of Mormon unless it's Jesus. Then it's true. Bleep you. We're going to commit wickedness to bring about Jesus and murder the innocent victims of our wickedness. <laughs> this, by the way, is Revelation 19. 11 and 17. <clears throat> but we still have the third part of the tales of the stars of heaven cast down to the earth. Falling stars. A fallen prophet. 2nd of January 2018. Quadranted meteor showers at the tail of Draco the Dragon. The third largest of the year. Third part. <clears throat> Monson dies as Nelson then takes over. There you go, Mormons, the Book of Revelation. Now do you understand why it was in the Book of Mormon? As Nephi has his vision of the Tree of Life with Jewish Kabbalah of 180 years with the different points on the tree and the lines connecting them. 18 times 10, 180. Joseph Smith died in 1844. 180 years later is 2024. The death of Joseph Smith is the end of the latter days and the start of the millennium with the reign of the Christ. The restoration of Joseph's religion that was usurped with his assassination. all given revelation so that Mormons would not be deceived of a false prophet who says no man knows the day of the hour kick him in the crotch somewhere I've got the gift in my files I hope I should still have it it's the Time Magazine that was turned into a gif, an action thing, in which the little girl who was crying at the border, being separated from her mother, and Trump is standing over her, looking down at her as she's crying up at him. And so somebody had made a gif in which the little girl does a, a jump kick into Trump's crotch. I can't find it. It's somewhere in there. <sighs> but, nonetheless. <laughs> and I should have turned it into a video from a gift. GIF, but my files are not in order. Uh. <sighs> okay, Revelation 19. This is also comparable to Joseph Smith, section 8058. The wedding supper feast of the Lamb at the temple. Thus the death sign, the fall of the great and abominable church. And as you go to the end, sure enough, the false prophet along with the false king are taken and cast into the lake of fire burning with brimstone the day that shall burn as an oven and they that come shall burn you and so you need to get to zion you need to find your christ you need to listen to him you need to leave utah in an exodus to go to zion the feast of tabernacles Spoiler alert. <laughs> Verse 
verse 11 in Revelation 19. I saw heaven opened. That's your big clue. You're about to be given a date. <sighs> Revelation. Behold a white horse. Yeah, because it's real. Because I saw it on Rapture Palooza. That Jesus is dead. Anna Kendrick's boyfriend murdered him. With Beelzebub's death ray. Who <laughs> died with Heavenly Father in the sauna. <laughs> That's where they get it from. Because Christians believe this is Jesus Christ coming from the clouds of glory to murder the heathens that they've been victimizing with their wickedness to cause Jesus to come. <laughs> and Mormons remove the horse. <laughs> he just comes from the heavens. Marching down as portrayed in the Salt Lake or the DC Temple. And I warned you, because I know about their plot to overthrow the government. <clears throat> and so, the coming of Jesus is the coming of Jesus in their minds. But Jesus isn't real, he ain't coming. So the church has to do all the work to coup the government, and they failed in 2020. But here we go. Thus, the need for an exodus before the bloodbath is so frustrating that nobody sees this coming, even though MAGA says it's coming. We're gonna do it. Watch us. And the government's not stopping them and locking them up. And they're already tampering with the election. They're already threatening people. already rigging it and so no it doesn't matter that Trump got humiliated by Harris in the election after humiliating Biden in the first debate because Trump has already rigged it he wants to lose on purpose and so yeah it's awesome that Taylor Swift came out and said I'm voting for Harris and so yes 400,000, I'm hearing, after Taylor had made that announcement, then registered to vote for this election. Yeah, Harris is going to win. But Trump is already rigging it. He's already denying the results before they even happened. He's a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> and I warned you that his debate saying that the Jamaicans <clears throat> are eating their pets was an order. And so, sure enough, the order was to deport them. He's purposely making a false accusation to cause their deportation. That's the order. Accuse them of eating pets to deport them. Project 2025 is going to deport them anyway. But Trump is trying to get it going now. Why? He wants a civil war. He's purposely tanking his chances of winning. He's now involved with his newest sex whore, who's an alt-right extremist, neo-Nazi. Laura Loomer? Yeah, he's the newest woman he's banging. Because it ain't Melania. 
We already know this. He got busted for Stormy Daniels. This is who he is. He's a beast. Literally from <laughs> prophecies. <laughs> so, yes. So the Book of Mormon. Dun 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 First Nephi, chapter one, verses eight through ten. Being thus overcome with the Spirit, he was carried away in a vision, even that he saw the heavens opened. We already read from section 3, the Book of Mormon is prophecy and revelation, giving us the time, day, and hour. Here it is. The start of the Book of Mormon starts us off in the year, the first year, where Lehi starts his ministry warning Mormons with the Book of Mormon, because it's an exact same pattern match for Joseph Smith's second vision. The Iron Rod from Revelation chapter 12. God sitting on his throne, one descending out of the midst of heaven, who's the sun at noonday, and twelve others who are stars. Saturn, in Ophiuchus, Jupiter in Virgo, twelve stars in Leo. 23rd September 2017 after the death of the king sign on the 21st of August 2017 the first year when a president is put on the throne of America by a foreign government And the Exodus year is 600 years from the time Lehi left Jerusalem, which was 8 April 4 CE, an annular eclipse over Russia. 20, 20 years before 8 April 2024 the crossroads of the sun god it's already been confirmed remember stormy daniels he's already been convicted it's just that the sentencing's getting delayed so after the election are you kidding me Have you not heard his death threats that our government is not locking him up for? You're not hearing the bloodbath threats. He said Taylor Swift is going to die. He's gave the order to assassinate Taylor. She already just got through an assassination attempt by Islamists. Wasn't it Islamists or was it white supremacists? I think it was Islamists. <clears throat> because she's not fat enough. <laughs> Hips are not. <laughs> double D's are not double D's. <laughs> double D's for David. All symbolized. So there you have it. Revelation, guys. Right there in the Book of Mormon. So again, go back to 3rd Nephi, chapter 7. This year, because they failed in 2020. <clears throat> and so, Samson 
again go over this and then we'll try to remember to cover the three facsimiles out of all the other facsimiles that were specifically put in the book of Abraham and put in that exact order. So, Judges chapter 13, you have Manoah and his wife, Noah, the exact same spelling, just the M is at the beginning for the high priest suffix, uh, prefix determinative. So it's the high priest Noah and his wife, and they weren't able to have a child, and so they meet with Pharaoh, and Pharaoh rapes her. And she's on the list of the pattern. The sun got at noonday. Pharaoh, Amen, Emmanuel. And now she gets pregnant and has the sun king. <clears throat> and he's a descendant of the Danites who insurrected Joseph's church and murdered him. Cooed it. With the election fraud and decertification of the election in 1838 to cause the civil war in America. And the death of the king. Same exact patterns, guys. That's why I've been doing all these videos. And so Samson goes down to Timnath and saw a cute little honey bunny in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines, Islam, Palestine. They stole the name. <laughs> These were the sea people in literal history terms. This is not literal history. The sea people came from the Grecian islands in the Mediterranean and did a sweeping burn of everything. They burned everything to the ground. And then they finally stopped in, in Canaan and called the land Philistine for those who settled in the Gaza Strip area of Philistia and thus Palestine. And the other groups settled in the northern kingdoms. They are the literal house of Israel, which is not literal. <laughs> it's where the scripture prophets got them from. <clears throat> and uh, and so this is the context that's going on. Salem was there 200 years before the Philistines, the Sea People. And so the Salem people are the original inhabitants of the land. It was just a family or two. We don't know for sure. We don't have the records of the origin of settlement on the mountain that they designated as Salem, which means peace. They're at the top of the mountain, Utah. That's the symbolism. And, and so that became the kingdom of Judah after 1450 when David Moses III came to push out the Hittites from Egyptian land at Har Megiddo, number one. <clears throat> and so all of this is being prophesied for the latter days. From John, from the Book of Mormon. And you need to know the history in order to understand the prophecies. That's why I did the whole introduction part. So that you can understand the revelation from the prophecy. Okay, so these guys are the great and abominable church. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Which, yes, Islam embraces Jesus, created by Roman Emperor Constantine. They just turned him into a Muslim spy. He's coming back to murder Christians who thought Jesus is theirs. <laughs> but he didn't show either. 
and then they failed on Ninth Ave. You're welcome, Israel. That was because of me. I sent an emergency tip that weekend <coughs> to let them know of Iran and a possible plot to strike on Ninth Ave, as is the historical custom of Ninth Ave. <coughs> and that Monday, sure enough, I find out that we ended up sending in a nuclear sub to the site. And Iran panicked. You're welcome, Israel. I'm surprised that our FBI finally listened to me to notify Biden to give the order to send in a sub, to expose a sub, but nonetheless it happened. <clears throat> and so, yeah, notice, Islam, or uh, Iran, still to this day, has not retaliated. They got scared and stopped. This is why there is such a concerted effort to destroy America. Because once America falls, the enemy nations are then free to attack. Because nobody is as powerful as the United States of America. And so the focus is to destroy America. Then the enemy can then do their thing and cause World War III. That's why all this is happening. And so he sees a, a honey bunny of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And he wants her mommy and daddy. <laughs> and so you see him getting married. There's a wedding supper feast. It would have to be at a temple of the Philistines, the great and abominable church. And he kills a lion. The sun king kills a lion. Leo is a lion. Did a solar eclipse occur in Leo the lion? at the star Regulus, which is called the King Star? Yep, 21st of August, 2017. And so the wedding supper feast of the king, who is the child raised up to take the throne, 23rd September, 2017, the start of the ministry, right here. Book of Judges. The same revelation, the same prophecy template, but told in a different story form. Different names of the characters, different events that occur, but it's all the same. All following the law of Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 15 through 19 and 20 for the false prophet <clears throat> and there it is in the Book of Mormon Lehi Samson Moses Jesus it's all the same thing every story is the exact same pattern all giving you the same dates. So there it is, 21st of August 2017 with the death of the lion. And then 23rd September 2017 with the birth of the child. To take over the throne. And so yes, the 1st of October 2015 Harry Packer Scott just bit the big one after the 
Sun shall be darkened, moon turn to blood, stars fall from heaven of 2014-2015 on Jewish calendar days. Samson gets married to a daughter of the great and abominable church in the temple with the inverted pentagram on the keystone of the doors thereof in room number 13 and then has his wedding supper feast of the lamb at the lion house next to the beehive house And so this year, on the 2nd of October, the day after the wedding anniversary, she's no longer in the marriage with him. Remember, she was burned last year. But Judges 15, his wife is burned in annual eclipse. 14th of October, 2023, over Utah, the church, the bride, the inverted pentagram of Lucifer, the great and abominable church. <clears throat> so yeah, it's all being portrayed. But this year, the day after, is the last solar eclipse on the last year of the latter days, on the last day of the Jewish year, which is religious, civil. There's two calendars. The one that happened on 8 April 2024, which is Samson dying in the Ram Lamb constellation, and the solar eclipse occurring on the back of the white horse in Pisces. Revelation 19, 11, 17. Saw sign, white horse, and then 17, an angel standing in the sun. Angel is the wife. The bride, religion, moon, standing in the sun, government, king, husband. Probably should have put that in the one picture that I redid recently. King and queen. <clears throat> so yeah, all of this is playing a part. And yes... She cut my hair and betrayed me to the Philistines. The most eligible bachelor in Mormonism will remain the most eligible bachelor in Mormonism because women think that they can be wicked to bring about Jesus and then say, hey, we're wicked, murder those heathen men so that we can then be sealed to you in polygamy. Because you're perfect, Jesus. You do not want to marry a woman who murdered to be with you. <laughs> it's a big clue you need to run. <sighs> so yeah. Revelation always accompanies the prophecies. You can't have a prophecy without the revelation. Because the prophecy then is worthless. What good is it to prophesy if nobody knows the day or the hour? <laughs> you just string people along. Getting them to pay you money. Okay, so there you have it. This is interesting. We're cutting them down by an hour each movie. <sighs> Crap! forgot as I turned off the camera I was gonna go over the facsimiles with you I've already done this 
you know, and oh, it's all been done. But nonetheless, we'll do it again. Facsimile number one. Joseph Smith specifically chose the lion couch scene. There's a death on the altar, an attempted murder anyway, on a lion couch. Leo the lion, death, 21st October 2017. And also, by the way, Mercury, the messenger, with Mars, the false prophet. Brilliant, Joseph. Brilliant. Facsimile number two is a sun, and it's got a ring around it, ring of fire, annular eclipse. It's also a woman's womb. Virgo, the wife being burned, 14 October 2023. And number three, he does get the identities wrong. You gotta switch them. The woman and the prince but they are getting married, they're holding hands before God sitting on his throne. <laughs> and then Pharaoh, as Joseph claims, is the woman behind him. But again, remember David Moses III? A man like David Moses III, the prince, Emmanuel, sun god. So you need to know about David Moses III of Egypt, the Pharaoh. How did he come about? Well, David Moses II and his queen, Hepsetsut. David Moses II became king of kings, lord of lords, the great high priest over Egypt. His queen, Hepsetsut. <clears throat> they had a baby, David Moses III, the same one who was involved in Armageddon with the Hittites, and then went to the mountain of Salem and took a vacation during the middle of the war. And so he comes in the midst of the war to cheat, commit adultery, with Uriah's wife? <laughs> Salem would then go on to build a temple to the house of David Moses of the 18th dynasty and a palace for the tributary king who is the son of the daughter of the priest of that little hamlet of the tribal leader <clears throat> so that they could have an heir to the throne of Egypt. Solomon, Salem with an N, Salem, peace. N is for king or kingdom. So the king of Salem the king, or the kingdom of Salem, kingdom, king, king of Salem of the kingdom of Salem. That's the title, not actual name, but there you got Solomon, who builds the temple in the text and the palace. It's a prophecy in Revelation. Joseph Smith knows this. And so thus says Pharaoh is female. David Moses II died early. David Moses III is too young to take the throne. So Hatshepsut goes to the Amun priesthood and says, 
my mother was raped as a 14-year-old queen by Father Almond, who came from outer space on the back of a flying horse. <laughs> and gave birth to her. That's it. So that's where it began. And then she said, in the pre-mortal council of heaven, they knew in advance that this would happen. And they laid their hands upon my head and set me apart to become the future Pharaoh of Egypt. Until David Moses III is old enough to take the throne. The Amun priesthood said, awesome, we like it, we can remain in business. Until Akhenaten, whom the Egyptians were unworthy to behold the face of Amun, and so he removed the Amun priesthood from their midst and replaced it with the Aten priesthood of the sun disk for which they still were wicked in the wilderness with his Akhetaten temple complex. And so the kingdom and dynasty were destroyed and usurped by the Seti dynasty. And needs to be restored. Yeah, Doctrine and Covenants took Moses out of their midst, and the Melchizedek priesthood also, which is the name to replace the name of Amen, to avoid the too frequent repetition of the name. And took Moses out of the midst also. So there you have David Moses III getting married, as Pharaoh can't be Hepzibah, and so they, Joseph knows, puts a other Pharaoh, but says that Pharaoh is the mother, Hathor. Notice it's not the throne symbol on her head for Isis. It's the horns with the solar disk of the Apis bull of Hathor, the mother. Hath, Hor, house of Horus, the mother of Horus. Where's Jupiter right now, guys? Between the horns of Taurus. Huh, retrograding between the horns of Taurus. Fascinating. For the final year, huh? After leaving Aries for the death sign. Amazing how everybody knew, except Mormons, who were still waiting for Jesus. <sighs> Joseph knew, he was trying to tell you demonstrating the gifts. So let's close with that instead. To remind you once again, at the end of the video where nobody's listening anymore. Joseph Smith has a duty as the president of the office of the high priesthood to preside over the whole church and to be Messiah Ben David the third to set up the order to set up the temple to be assassinated by the enemy who insurrects his church to be restored in the latter days of a man like Moses the man like Moses to be the head of the church to resurrect it to be a seer, a revelator, a translator, and a prophet 
having all the gifts of God, which God bestows upon the head of the church. No one else. Joseph had it. I have it. God gave it to me. God does not give it to Nelson. All the way back to Brigham. None of them have it. They only claim the titles and trick you into believing they are. They redefined Revelator. They don't even claim Translator. They don't have the gifts. They deny the gifts. They deny the power thereof. They only claim the title. I have the gifts. I have the power. It came from God. And you're still not getting it? You're still not believing? You're still in denial of precisely as it stands in Acts. I cannot help you. I will not take away your agency.